UFC Duval back again, baby. April must be our month in Duval, so welcome back. It's the runbacks. For sure. Take it. Yes, sir. Mark, how you feeling, man? You excited about this shit or what, man? I'm super excited. Not only are they coming back to Jacksonville to where I can watch this shit live, it is a fucking loaded ass card. And my boy's on the fight card, fighting for a title. Who's your boy? So, Are you talking about Zombie? Oh, zombie. Yeah, that's my boy. Oh, Sun Kim's cousin, huh? Mm. Oh, yeah. This should be good, man. And look, we got some, we got three big dogs at the top. And I'm thinking about, like, packaging all three of them dogs and doing a little something, something. So, we'll, we have a good one uh, coming up. I think I got, uh, so, like, I'm going to get this, this early prelims, man. Like, damn. They got some nice names on this early prelims. Is Alexi Olenek going for 100 fights? I thought he was already there. I mean, this is back-to-back, right? Didn't he fight last card? Yeah. Or no? He fought like... Fairly recently. Like, he fought within this year. I know for a fact. He might have fought, like, last month. June 19th. There's no way. Does this no fight way. get pushed back? No. The last fight was June 19th. His fight got pushed back. It's impossible, cuz. His fight got pushed back. There's no way. Oh, did he get... the one you were talking about, too. That was when he fought Spivak. His fight really? got pushed back. Mm-hmm. What have happened between now and then? I, I feel like I saw him fight recently. I could be way wrong, though. You know what? His his fight probably got pushed back. Like it got canceled? It's possible. Like it was supposed to be on the last card, but it's on this one? Yeah, it could have got scrapped. Because I don't I was think any of us watched the full card last week. And the thing is, though, will we be in the arena for that, though? You, you know what I mean? Will we why, be there? Why, why not? I, I think this year is going to be different. I think we're gonna we're gonna tailgate. We're gonna do some crazy things, and then we're gonna eventually stumble our way into the arena. That's how I feel. Cause last yeah. year we we walked in, we was getting rained on. We went to the little tent outside on the left, then got a little shot, and then we walked in. I think it's gonna be different this year. Oh, uh, yeah. that was also during. COVID era where Florida was open and no one else was. Yep. That's why I feel this year is going to be a little <clears> different. <throat> I think I'm going to be doing like a a, a minor two-step on my way into the door. That's how I look at it. I'm getting twisted. And I'm going to walk to the venue. I'm going to park the way. And I'm going to start my day early, bro. Like, uh, when, when do these early prelims kick off? Six, early, early. Six six p.m. I I I'm honestly hoping, not not hoping, but I don't think I'm gonna catch the first two fights on the early prelims. I really Why not? Don't think I am. Why not? Because I don't think I'll be aware. I mean, I, we can start pregame at like two. Wherever we're at, I'm gonna stumble my way through the front door. That's all yeah. I know. <laughs> Cause I do want to see some. I want to see a good bit of. I, I mean, Julio Arce and Daniel Santos, man and weight. That should be a good one. But um, Pyro Rodriguez and Kay Hansen. I want to see that. I want to see what Miss Ali is working with. I was about to say, like, as long as I make the Olympic fight above, I'm happy. Yeah. But if we come in for the first three fights. I won't mind seeing them, but I won't care if I don't. Speaking on that, I'm I'm like game for this prelims. The prelims is a fight night card that is great, honestly. And yeah, it's crazy. This this is just the prelims, like literally. I, UFC's um website's funny as fuck, bro. Like, some of the people are in black and white and some are in color. Some have, like, no picture. It's like a shadow. 
I'm like, why, like, why is this dude's in, why is this shit like a, a black and white photo? Um, Mickey Gall taking on Mike Mallet or Mike a lot. You know why, right? I do not know why. I know why. He's not fully unlocked. <laughs> he's the next. It's character only the to teaser. Yeah, he's a, he's the next character to be unlocked. That's what it was. Batman is on the preview. That's why he's in black and white. He's the next character to be unlocked from the uh, fighter process for unlocking characters. Well, Aspen Lad Raquel Pennington should be good, bro. Like, uh, I'm assuming Aspen is going to make weight, and this fight is going to go. You know, it's going to go as scheduled. Yeah, assuming. Yeah. You're assuming. assuming. How do you feel? Ooh. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this fight, though, uh, Mark? You um, you think Raquel's gonna bounce, gonna, gonna bounce Aspen out of this one, or what? Or how do you feel? How you see this fight going? So, in all honesty, this is an interesting one for me because I think that Aspen Lad should be able to take over this fight and just kind of walk away with it. To be honest. But there's something about Raquel Pennington to where she is always fucking game and she can make any fight dirty and in her <clears throat> and turn it to her advantage. And I'm actually feeling in my gut that Raquel Pennington's gonna come back furious and take this. I Eight say months? second round TKO. For Raquel. For Raquel. Mo, you got any thoughts on this one? Uh I would bet like a dollar on Aspen just because she's an underdog and it's very intriguing. It's like young, you can't even say hungry no more, but just young aspect, prospect, whatever you want to call it, versus uh, a gritty veteran. I'll take that, them odds. Plus 165 is a straight up bet. Plus some change, yeah, I'll take that bet. I'll bet like not even a whole unit. I bet half a unit on a uh, Aspen lead, honestly, just because because the return is so good. The return is so good. You don't have to bet much to get like something back. Yeah, I mean you you're not paying juice, and if you think she has a legit chance to win, then yeah, I would say go for it. Um, she's an underdog in almost every way too. Um, Raquel has more experience. She's um, coming off a win. She's an inch taller, and she is. She has two. She has the reach advantage uh, in uh, in arm reach um, by an inch and a half. So, like, uh, just their styles. I don't know. I I, I think. Yo, wait, 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 wait. Before you go, the only thing. That is difficult with this one is will Aspen Lad make weight? That's the thing. This thing. We're over here on what Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Where it's Tuesday, mm-hmm. right? She um, got till Friday. And that's what I'm saying. She got till Friday, but will she make weight? That's the thing. We, this fight might not even happen. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Look, I, I don't know if um because it's. I, <sighs> When people, when fighters repeatedly miss weight, um, they got to consider, you know, moving up. And it, they they have her listed as a 145 pounder on the website. I'm not sure if that's a mistake or not. But she's so got, no, that's not a mistake. Because she her last fight was at 145 because she missed weight. And, okay. And she's fighting at band weight currently. So. Yeah. yeah. And there is no 145 pound division. There's no featherweight division for women's currently. Correct. It's just like who wants to fight Amanda <laughs> at that weight class? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very it's a very shallow class for sure. Um, but stylistically, I I, I don't have an, enough to even know. I think both. I mean, as far as Aspen last concerned, I think most of all of her strengths. I've seen she's um, pretty aggressive, and I've seen her do some good uh, some good work on the ground and pound. We know Raquel's tough. I'm trying to figure out like how I see this fight going. If I were to pick Aspen Lad, because I mean, technically speaking, I would not. Like if I were making the bet, I would just 
pay the juice and pick Pennington. I wouldn't go with the, I would not go with the underdog in this situation. It's fair. Yeah, it's but, one of those fights where you're just gonna have to see it to see it. Because you can't really call it. To be honest, I, I, I don't know how I feel about that either though, because like I don't feel like Aspen Ladd should be the underdog. Really? In all honesty. What I do don't you think, think that she should. What do you think Aspen does better than Pennington? Actual boxing. I okay. think her actual boxing is better. Like, Pennington's better at dirty boxing and gritty boxing. Aspen Ladd's more crisp and technical, is the way I look at it. And to be honest with these two, I don't really see people trying to, like, make it a ground fight. If they go there, they're going to go there. But I think they're going to stand up for the most part. And I just feel that Aspen Ladd's just a little more technical. I hope this fight's bloody as hell. And I'm there to see it. But I think yeah, that's that's my other point to that is Aspen Lad is aggressive and Rocky loves to make it a dog fight. So if you can make it a dog fight, Rocky's might pull ahead in that style of fighting. Okay. Um I if you if I don't I, I just don't see it being um, that great of a fight at all. But I do see it being a dog fight, and I do see it being one of those really spark plugs in the in the beginning of the card where you the ladies you always put on, bro. Like every time you you get on a card, and there's you know there's always some heavyweight fights that are like you know right around there. That can kind of put you to sleep, but the ladies always put on. And I think these Warriors are going to do a good job of making sure that it's entertaining. Now, from a technical standpoint, I don't expect much technicality. I think it's going to be a dog fight. And I'm taking who I think is has the more dog in them, and that's Raquel. I know Raquel had that situation where she was, you know, um, she was getting, like, battered in the corner, didn't, you know, do her any favors. Um, but in every fight she's ever been in that I've seen, she's always gritty, always tough. And um, I just really seeing it. I think that uh, she has the, the the edge in this one. Um, I don't really know where either one of these fighters has an overwhelming or any glaring like attribute about them that sticks out from the other. I think they're all kind of like somewhere like balanced in a way. Like there's nothing that Raquel does that's so much better than what Aspen does. No, no, no. There's no way. There's no way because the champion is just like so good at what she does. So there's no, I just mean like, there's no outlier. There's no outlier. What I'm saying is do you think there's a significant edge in, in striking for Aspen? Like a significant edge. Like you think that if it's if it just stays standing, she walks no. Raquel? No. no. Not significant. No. No. Like slightly, you think she has a slight edge, maybe? Slight Nothing yes. at all. Nothing at all. I think she has slight. What about grappling? How do you feel if it, this if this fight turns into a, a grappling match, who do you think fares better, in your opinion? Man, no. uh, this fight to me looks like cowboy from Brazil. Versus cowboy from America. That's what, but they're female. That's what this fight like. It's the same thing, bro. Like this fight, we're expecting to see some blood. Hopefully, we're gonna see yeah. a slobber knocker from these two females. That's all I know. And then we're gonna go into a heavyweight fight after that. That's how I look at this fight. Is like we're gonna see some like bloodshed. And then the next fight, we don't know what's going to happen. It might be a slow-ass fight. We don't know. Here's the interesting thing. Here's here's something that's interesting. If you look at, um, even though Raquel got bludgeoned bludgeoned in that one fight, her average strikes absorbed is less than um, Aspen's. Aspen's close to four uh, strikes absorbed per minute. And... Raquel's um, closer to three. And Raquel also has a better strike defense at 62%, as opposed to 49% for 
Aspen Lad. But the grappling seems to be uh, pretty balanced between them. Yeah. That's uh, neither of them go for that most of the time either, though. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like I said, I, I can't really. I don't uh, – if I were to bet this at all, MMA which I bet. probably – no, if I, if I were to bet this at all, I would put Raquel in a – I would pick Raquel as the favorite in like a three-piece, like a little small parlay, or just bet her straight up with uh, and then pay the juice if I were to bet this at all. I'm and gonna uh, I'm going to take Aspen, though. You take like Aspen Latin this one? Because her odds – it's just like it's too good. It's too good. It's too good. It's not that good. That's not that good. I, f- I feel it's too good. It feels too good. Wait, wait, what is she plus? What? One sixty-five. That's like that's not that. That's oh, that's decent. It it's like a, a good bet. You're like a, you're at a fair bet. That's how I feel. Yeah, you don't have to pay. You don't call it a fair bet. Like you yeah. have you don't dump nothing to win something. You dump. Nothing to win something. That's how well, you pay. Yeah, you pay, you pay on her. Wait, is it one? She's plus one what? One sixty five. So it's like, okay, I, okay. I pay like a hundred to win one sixty five. That's easy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Because I believe well, she might do it. But then again, you know, she's a coin flip. That's all I gotta say. She's a coin flip. Yeah, she's one of those. It depends on how she shows up, because she's had great ones and terrible ones, and I honestly think that might be connected with the weight cutting. But yeah, oh yeah, it has to be. But like I said, it's like the odds. Just if that the odds was like not that, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't bet on it. You get what I'm saying? But them odds are yeah. good. Them odds look if good. If you were closer to even, like say if it was like minus one ten, minus one hundred five, you wouldn't take Aspen Lad. Hey. No. Okay. Come on, that, look at my face. Look at my face. Hell no. <laughs> nope. Mm-mm. Yeah. I, stupid. Yeah. All okay. right. Well, uh, Rose, Jarzinho Rosenstrike taking on Marcin Tybro is up next in the heavyweight fight. They always put the female fight right before the heavyweight, and that's because you know, you this know, could be, this could be a big, this could be boring as fuck, bro. Or it or, could be. Or it could be Game over. Quick sleeps. Insta sleeps. I'm going to bet on insta sleeps. Give me Rosen Strike in the under. Under one and a half. Woo! Wait! Taking the under. Damn. Ooh. That's back to back. For the record, that's back to back favorites that I've picked. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. Jarzinho by knockout. I'm taking him by knockout. Um, knockout or TKO. Bro. The last, and I'll time, take the last time he was in Jacksonville, he didn't look too good for him. So I know. <laughs> I, know I know this boy is out here looking for redemption. Who That's got him last time? Who, who clipped him in Jackson and Duval? Who got him? You know who did, man. It's the, who the got him? The wild man, bro. Well, not even the predator? The wild man, bro. The predator said... Don't you move your head? He said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, "I'm gonna hit you with one of those." The windmill, bro. It, yeah, he got he got slept in Jacksonville due to the fact of uh, Big Francis. Well, he's not fighting Francis. He's fighting Marcin Tybura. So, um, I like Biggie Boy in this one. The crazy thing was, it wasn't even last year. It was two years ago because we couldn't have uh, events. Cause of yeah, the it was no crowd everything. for that one. There was no crowd. It was oh, silent. Quiet crowd. It was silent. Yeah. So every time you heard, you heard that shit. Like literally, you heard that shit. I slightly missed that. You still kind of get in the Apex shows. Mark, how do you see this one going? Oh, I'm the same as you. Under one and a half. Rose is true. I'm just gonna take I'm gonna take Jarzinho. I'm not gonna take the one and a half rounds. I'm gonna take Jarzinho to win um within the distance. So at any point before the before the third round's over. Before the um fight's over. I'm taking with inside the distance. This fight won't go the distance in my opinion. I think Jarzinho wins by knockout or TKO. I'm gonna He's go minus- knockout. 
under one and a half because it goes past that. Both of these guys are going to be so tired. I'm going to get knocked out. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I like Jarzino to have the better gas tank. But I'm not taking nothing away from uh, Marcin. Well, he's at minus, minus 150, so. This, I mean, this is a very good matchup. It's a very good well, matchup. Marcin's plus 130. How you feel? I mean, I'm not going to put no money on it because these odds, I don't like these odds. No? Okay. But I, I do like Jarzinho because that boy's good. He just, he fought some good people. <laughs> like, it's not my fault he fought them. Yeah, I mean he was winning. So when you win, that's all you can that's all you can get is top tier talent when you keep winning. Yeah, and we gonna we gonna see a lot of that um, later on in this card. <clears throat> Ian Gary taking on Darian Weeks. Darian Weeks plus two eighty. You feel froggy? Come on, man, Biggie boy, bro. Like, come on, bro. He only loses the good people though. That's the thing. He's still on the Rosen Street, aren't you? I'm still on yeah. Rosen Street, bro. Oh, yeah. are we like, going forward? Oh, shit. We're going forward? He just asked about the next match, forward. and he was still talking about Biggie <laughs> Boy. Bad, I was like, wait bad. a second. Oh, y'all talking about Darren Reeks and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Darren uh, Reeks. <laughs> oh, I don't know nothing about neither none of them, so I will return. It's a welterweight battle, and it's a uh, big favorite here. Ian Gary's minus 365. He got a whole year worth of favoritism. Honestly, I don't know much about either of these guys either, except for I think I'm not even 100% sure of this. Wasn't Darian Weeks on like one of the ultimate fighters, maybe? Maybe. Or was he a contender series guy? I've heard his name. I've heard both of their names. I'm assuming that like Gary's a matchup favorite given the numbers, but um, I try to lean away from the numbers. And more with who I believe is going to win based off of what I do know. And I don't know shit about either one of these guys. So the numbers don't mean. The, number don't, the numbers don't mean. Dick to me. I'm like, I don't know. All I know is that that Vegas likes them a lot. So I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah, sounds good. But that's, that's not going to be on the ticket. That won't make it to the ticket for me. All right, they both have one fight in the UFC. One's on a winning, a one fight winning streak UFC wise. The other one is not. One's on a one fight, one fight losing streak, huh? Yeah. Uh, Darren Weeks fought Barbarina and lost that fight, which that's a tough matchup for your debut, I, I could say. Mm-hmm. And then. Gray or Gary just he fought some dude I've never heard of and don't recognize whatsoever. But he knocked him out in the first round. At the very last second. Oh wow. Clutch. Clutch. At four minutes and fifty nine seconds he got the TKO victory. Knockout TKO. All right. So check this out. We got some good one here. Vink uh Vink in a a lightweight bout. We got uh Vink Pachel and Mark. Madsen in um on the main card. This is the main card now. Yo, yo, yo. Bruh. Okay, okay, okay. This is the sleeper fight of the night, I feel. Yeah, I think this I I agree. I think this could be a good one. This could this, be a banger. This this is because I, I believe Vinch Vin, Vink. How you say it? Vink? Vink? Vinch? Vink. How, Vink. You know we're notorious for butchering names. people's names. Like by far. But uh Vink Pachel. Vince, Vin, Vink, however you want to say his name. Yo. <laughs> I swear he was a welterweight previously, right? He didn't have the stash before. He's got the, uh, what's that dude's name, man? He's the, been a lightweight. Don Fry? The, the Don Fry mustache, bro. He got the, the <laughs> solid Don Fry mustache right now. Fighting against clean-shaven Mark Manson, bro. If this yeah, is Madsen, not a hockey fight, I don't know. Oh, yeah, Madsen don't have Madsen has no hair. He got none. Nothing. None. And uh my boy my boy uh Vink looks like uh a certified fireman. Man, he saved everybody 
if there's a fire, he got you, bro. That boy got the heavy stash. I will fireman carry you down the ladder real quick. Bro, look at that stash. That stash is defined. It's healthy stash, bro. It's defined. It's healthy. not it's not like I just did this yesterday and decided. How do you to see this fight? Up. How do you see this fight going? I don't know, cause t- to me, this is fight of the night. This is fight of the night. It's close too in numbers, minus one thirty and plus one ten. All I gotta say, it depends on how uh I, I believe Pichel used to fight at one seventy. I I he's, don't know. I don't know. He's a favorite. He's he might be the favorite, but I gotta see how his weight cut go, goes. You know what I mean? Because you know the weight cut matters. Like a lot of these guys are not in the limelight, so we don't know how they look. You get what I'm saying? But I'm well aware who this guy is, and it depends how his weight cut goes. Because I believe he used to fight at 170. Am I right or am I wrong? I have no idea. I'm not 100 percent sure because I don't recognize his uh, opponents enough. To tell if they were Walter Waits or not, to be honest. Because I was just looking at him. He is on a seven-fight winning streak in the UFC. He only lost his debut. Is he really? Which is tough enough. I could swear he's a uh, yeah. Walter Waite. That's the thing. He might be a um, uh, lightweight, just, just not fighting much. But I swear he was a Walter Waite. I oh. could be wrong. Don't listen to me, bro. I'm just a filthy casual just speaking my mind. For the third time in a row, I'm going to go with uh, the favorite. I'm going to pick uh, Vink in this one. Is he the favorite? Minus 130. I mean, he's, he's solid. I'm not, I'm not going to say that. He otherwise. is solid. I remember him. I remember. Oh, it's a good matchup, though. Match is undefeated. I was unaware of that. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. This is good. This is this is like you said. This could be fight of the night, bro. This is why I feel is gonna be the. Um, I don't know he's undefeated. I just know his body of work. I just feel like this fight is gonna be like the uh, the sleeper of the night, like low key fight of the night. Like holy shit, we didn't see this shit coming. That's what I'm hoping for. Especially with like, that dog fry fucking mustache, bro. Like look at that shit. Look at that shit, fucking Magnum PI mustache. Come on, bro. Look at it that looks shit, like bro. the old school, uh, like old nineteen forties, nineteen fifties boxer look. When they had stashes like that, and he's yeah. You want to go? Let's go. Put your oh, setup. It looks like. Put your setup. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I like Vink in this one actually myself. I like his uh, body of work a little bit better than like the other guy. I think he's gonna lose his O. Oh my goodness! His O will go. Huh? If we go mm-hmm. forward with the oh my god, woo we placement of this card is also perfect. This is bonkers. That's all I gotta say. Like the next fight after that is on the main card. Like for real. Like what? What is going on here, man? Like. Why are we spoiled? That's all I gotta say. Why are we spoiled? This is a pay per view, dog. Like I when mean, Dana this, said yeah. we'll be back and we'll do it good. He wasn't lying. Alright, this one's interesting. Like Tisha Torres taking on Mackenzie Dern. Wait, wait, wait. Um, before before we get started, can you guys this, tell me this is not like a mini international fight week in a way? Feels like um, it. Yeah. I look at it. Look at it. We got nobody from the same spots fighting each other. And it's no. all big fights. Yeah, uh, all meaningful fights. With all underdogs. Straight up. I know I'm going to be underdog heavy very soon here, but right now I am sticking with the favorites. Uh I am going to I'm taking McKenzie in this one. And I got McKenzie. Sorry, uh, last I didn't mention. I'm gonna take uh, Vink, but I'm gonna take uh, the distance. I think this fight's gonna go the distance. I'm gonna take uh, Vink winning outside. I mean, winning um, outside of distance. I think this goes to the, uh, the judges. But with McKenzie and Tisha, I'm taking McKenzie inside the distance, and I gotta win and be a sub. 
Man, if I told you you'd be dumb if you picked that, I'd be dumb. Because that's the same thing I'd pick. I'd pick submission before this this is not going to decision. I like I like a submission with Mackenzie Dern. I like armbar. That's what I'm going with. I like armbar. I like an armbar maybe second round. It could happen in the first. It it, it depends how much they uh engage in the first round. Depends how much you know how girls are. Tisha's scrappy, so this is what I'm saying. Make. That's what I'm saying. You know how girls are. Yeah, she gonna make it scrappy. She's what scrappy and strong. Yeah, but I like so, an arm bar. I like an arm bar for the finish. If I could call that, I would. But I'm not betting on it. Well, she's giving up like two and a half inches of reach. So Tisha is. So she's gonna have to get inside to do anything of significance. What's she called? Hey. Tiny Tornado or something? Yeah, Tiny Tornado. I mean, bro, Mackenzie Dern, she got pieced up by uh, Ogoro because her jujitsu was good. And I think she learned from there. What's her name? She- uh, Amanda. Amanda Hibas? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel She's- like she learned from there. So she, her grappling is going to be like on extra display. Like, look, if I get a hold of you. I'm taking your arm home, your leg home, whatever you want. Whatever body part you need me to take home with you. So that's how I feel this, this fight's going to go. It's not going to decision. That's how I feel. Okay. And you're taking, you taking McKenzie, right? Mm-hmm. What about you, Mark? How you feel? This is a tough one for me, too, because it's such a good matchup for me. It really is. But... Uh, I'm going to lean that way, too. I'm going to go Mackenzie Dern. Probably. I actually do like the armbar call, to be honest. Because for some reason, I feel like Tisha will probably knock her down and jump in and get caught. Like, I think she'll knock her down and then go in for ground and pound, but get caught in an armbar. That's I'm how I'm feeling. I'm laughing because it's a right right now. It looks like Jemaya is looking right at me right now. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so we we're, we're gonna go forward to the next fight, right? Well, yeah. let me tell you. When we go to this next fight, all I know is I need some popcorn because last year your boy did not get no popcorn. So as soon as the climax. Of this fight happens between oh, Mackenzie man. Dern and Tisha Torres. I'm a actually no. You know what? I ain't even gonna. I ain't even gonna wait. I'm just gonna get popcorn off of it. I, and I'm gonna have some stale popcorn eating him, watching the Chamaev versus Gilbert Burns fight. That popcorn is gonna be so dry. I don't care. I just I just need popcorn because I was denied access from popcorn last year. Make up. Yep. Redo. I'm going to eat healthy, healthy, like really not healthy as in like the content of the food, but healthy as in the quantity of food. I'm going to do all that shit long before I get into the fucking venue because I'm doing two things when it comes time to get to get in those doors. I'm going to be drinking whatever beer they got to offer and watching violence and watching. I don't give a fuck about a snack. I'm gonna watch some violence. I know what we're gonna do. We're get, we're gonna go around. We're get, we get, we're live. We're live. You know we're live. This year, Mark will be able to partake. Facts. <laughs> Let's get it. We're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be like talking to random cats, and they're gonna be like, "Yo, yo, yo, go this guy." I'm from here, and we're just gonna look at him like, no, he gonna lose. Like the cat from last year, he was all decorated out, and he was, he was Gucci. That's all I gotta say. He was Gucci. He was Gucci as hell, and he was like, yo, go Masvidal. And we looking at him like, oh no, oh no, oh no. We we couldn't call it though, the knockout. But we just looked at him with that weird ass look, 
And we're like, nah, bro. Usman. And then we mm-hmm. saw it. We saw it. We saw it. We saw the fucking sweat off his head fly to our faces. <laughs> like, literally. We saw that shit. Literally. We saw it. We saw it. We saw it. So yeah, he got smashed. On that note, we talking about Hamzat Chamayev. His name will confuse you if you look at it. He's fighting this guy named Gilbert Burns. And you hear his name, he sounds like a normal guy from like Springfield somewhere. And he's fighting this guy named Hamzat. The K is silent. The H is hard. Chamayev. If you look at him, he just looks like he's a happy guy. But before we go forward, I've been getting a lot of hype train videos. I don't know how good this guy is, man. And this is the fight to make it. So what do you guys think? Like, what happens before we even jump forward with what happens if he wins? We got to deep dive this fight because Hamza is the guy with all the cards in his hands right now. He's that dude. Like, look at him, man. He's just, he's just cool. He's chilling. Number eleven in welterweight fight. Number two. Do you feel like Gilbert Burns is the derailer of the hype train, or do you feel like he's part of the hype train movement? What do you guys think? I'll go first. This will be quick. Um, yes, D- Gilbert Burns uh, derails. Uh, I got Gilbert, Bur- Gilbert Gilbert first round. Say less. Whew. Called Gilbert first round. Gilbert's gonna clip him. He's gonna be his first punch. It's gonna be his only punch. You're gonna hurt him. TKO. First time he got significant strike in the UFC. We're gonna find out he's now champ. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Significantly found out, <laughs> like significant strike. Significantly found out, <laughs> like you good, you done. We gonna find out he don't have he don't have a chin. We're gonna find out significantly. <laughs> That's what you're saying. I'm saying he's the first time he got a, a real strike landed on him, right? He hasn't been hit. Yeah, his uh, his absorbed strikes absorbed per minute is zero, right? point zero eight. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I guess he got hit once at one point, but it was probably from a flailing arm after he hit somebody else. <clears throat> I mean, I'm taking, I'm going with the dogs. Oh, oh, oh. I'm bro, taking Gilbert. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Sorry, Mark. Plus 135. Plus, plus 375. I ain't gonna lie. I've been on the train, bro. I thought I was the fucking leader of the fucking train, bro, but you ain't. Little Eddie Bravo, <laughs> that boy is the the conductor. So, on my point of view of things, like yeah, I'm not the the main dude. I'm just trained no more. I'm just the guy in the back in first class, chilling out, drinking some something something. So if Hamzat loses to Gilbert Burns, oh man, this welterweight division is about to be shaken up. But if he wins. If he wins, I don't think he gets a title fight, bro. I I don't think we get that far because I think that he loses this fight. I'm with I'm with Brian on this, but in a different way. I think he probably does have a chin. I'll give him a chin just because of that beard. Um, but I think this is gonna be an RDA versus Pettis type fight. I think you're going to see Gilbert Burns take down the fucking Russian and pound him out for three fucking rounds. Unanimous decision, 30-28. 30-27. Okay. Okay. Um, I, just, I like Gilbert Burns as the underdog in this one. Um, I would pick Hamzat if the if he was a much smaller favorite. If we were talking about a plus two, 
10 or like a plus 250 favorite for Hamzat, then I would pick him. But I don't think he's that much better. I think he's better. I, think, I mean, I think he has ed- an edge. I see paths to victory for sure for Chemaya. We know Burns can be a little chinny. Um, he can. He, he's been um, hurt before. He's been knocked out before. Um, one thing about Gilbert that um, we haven't seen recently from the welterweight incarnation of Gilbert Burns is his jujitsu prowess. We've seen his wrestling ability and his ability to control a fight against Wonder Boy, but we haven't really seen him um, use like what is probably one of his best strengths, and that's uh, his jujitsu. But he's been knocking everybody out. I mean, well, knocking people out. He he has some experience. He's been getting you know a little reliant on his hands at welterweight, especially because he's I mean you know when you knock a guy out, it gives you you get more and more confidence that you can do it again. I just see this fight as I think Hamzat's an amazing prospect. I think he deserves to be in this fight, but um, I just for I have a feeling outside of the numbers that Gilbert is going to win this one. I think Gilbert's going to take, take this fight home, um, and I'm going to my, my bet's going to reflect that. I'm taking Gil. I'm taking the underdog here, um, but going, like you said, going forward, um, let's say Chimaev runs over Gilbert. Let's say he does come in, chins him, wins it, wins wins it, wins this fight decisively. Then yeah, I think uh, Chimaev versus I think either one of these guys a win will be looking at a um, Kobe Covington title, title eliminator. Not me, not me, not me. I think if Gilbert Burns wins, he'll fight Kobe, right? But if Chamayev wins, depending on what happens with the title, right? Because you still have Leon Edwards out there. Basically, it's going to be either whoever wins fights Leanna Edwards or Kobe. You get what I'm saying? Because we don't know what's going on with uh, that whole thing. Because that's not set in stone yet. So, if that fight is not happening, one of those guys is going to fight the winner of this fight. And I would love to see it. If Chamayev goes up against Kobe, oh my god. That's going to really prove a point how good Kobe is. That's how I feel. You know, the great thing about going against Kobe, though, is if anyone can pull off a win against Kobe, you automatically have a story about how, how well he could possibly do against Usman. Because they're so close, in my opinion. Except I think Usman has a little more power. But I honestly think as long as if, if Usman wins against Edwards and Shemaev wins this time, I think he'll go straight to a title fight, to be honest. I think he will. But if Edwards wins... Uh, Usman's going to get a rematch most likely and then that'll divert it to Kobe Covington that's how I feel about that because there's so much time in between um, like because these guys are fighting this weekend Mm -hmm. uh, and Usman Edwards hasn't even been been booked yet right no No, so not officially Kobe already fought Kobe Kobe fought Masvidal a, a month ago, right? So we got um, no, Kobe. He fought him like a week ago or two. <laughs> All right. So Kobe's like available. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's available. He's available now. Yeah. He's available he's, now. He's now. He's now. Right. Right. He's and then now. No, he's on the injury list. He's got a cracked tooth. <laughs> Um, he he's available now to be booked. 
Um, and obviously these two guys have a dance right now. And the only other guy that is even in that conversation um, is Luque, right? Yes. So outside of Luque, I would say if Gil wins this, he's punching the ticket to, uh, to get Kobe. If Hamza wins this, he's punching the ticket to get Kobe. And the winner of that gets the title shot. Given that I'm, I'm assuming that this, which is an assumption, which you know what that means. I'm assuming that Leon's getting the title shot, and it just hasn't been booked yet. That's the that's the only reason I'm making this this. That's why I have this feeling of the winner of this is basically getting that title eliminator. Because right now Kobe's like in the spot where Whitaker was in Welch in middleweight, where he's beating everybody that's not the champ. And he's getting, you know, he's this will be his. He already had his two title shots. Gil only had one. I mean, he did have one title fight against the champ, and he lost. But he's still number two. And if he wins this fight, I mean, where else does he go? He's not going to fight Luke. And he, I mean, the only other guy he has nah, he's is gonna, he's going to fight probably Kobe. Right. I'm saying the only other guy he has to fight is Kobe. Kobe Covington, um, for the number one spot at least. It and makes then it easier for them. Yeah, well, I think it's I think it's either way. Since being that comes comes at eleven, I don't think it means that it won't change anything. Him it, winning, I really think it means it, how he wins. Like if he goes in there and carries him across the, the fucking cage like he did with uh, Jing Lang, then yeah, it's gonna yeah, be I mean, easy easy money. Like gives this man a title shot, but it hurts Leon not, not Edwards' spot. Nine eleven. Not not at eleven. It's just like yeah. he's next. He's next for sure. He's One thing that we're overlooking up. though is literally the following weekend, Luke's fighting. So it all depends on how his fight goes too. Cause he's a, he's fighting uh Muhammad. Mm-hmm. And Muhammad's so, on a tear right now. Himself. And he's on a tear right now. So if Luke can get off uh Big win right there. It could shake up things right there, and that could automatically put a Chamaya versus Luke type fighter in the in the mix. Yeah, well, I mean, he I, potentially. I just um, that would be lateral in my opinion, because he's already fighting number two, and then if he beats number two, anybody that's that he will be fighting like out of those two guys, out of Muhammad and Luke, would be a lateral move as opposed to going forward. Going going forward for him is only it's only Kobe Kobe, Kobe only Kobe and Usman the, ch- the yeah. one of the champ because you and, know you know for a fact like if Usman loses depending on how he loses it's probably gonna be an instant rematch and he's probably gonna fight Usman again or not Usman uh, Leon Edwards Edwards Leon Edwards will probably fight Usman again so we'll have that instant rematch you know how the UFC does. Mm-hmm. They always do that. Where's, it's such a that fight's not even booked yet. That's why I'm like, because you they, they're gonna even if they have once they have that fight and the dust settles. Let's say even if um it goes as it, it, and still Kamaru beats um Leon for the second time. But that's the and thing. that's the great wait, let's part say, let's, about it. Let's let's say it goes and still they're still gonna need time off before they book any more fights, and they, they're gonna have all these contenders just waiting around. No, that's the good part about it because currently uh, Usman's doing the, the what's he what's he got going on hand surgery or something. Yeah, I was about to say he's doing his surgery right now. Yeah, that's why they so, haven't looked it yet. So we have opportunities for these fights to happen, and we have a good matchup coming this Saturday with Chemaev against Burns, aka Hazmat. However you want to call his name. This dude is nuts. So we got a good one. We got a good one. Yes, we do. Um, Speaking of, like, running it back, Jacksonville is getting its second uh, major pay-per-view event. Shout out to Duval for putting on. Thanks, Dan White, for bringing it to uh, our beautiful country of Florida, our home. AKA Jacksonville Duval, as we call it. We got champion versus champion in this next fight. We got Pewter Jan versus Aljamain Sterling, who is uh, Pewter to me 
And I would say consensus. If you go around the league, most people consider Pewter Jan the uncrowned king of the Bantamweight division. Like, he's the guy to beat in the Bantamweight division. That's, I mean, that's, that's pretty uh, – it's like the consensus. And if you base it off the last fight, Pewter, up until that knee, was wrecking shot and on his way to being the undisputed bantamweight champion. My opinion, most people's opinion watching. However, I'm taking Aljamain in this one only because of two reasons. The first reason, the numbers. Minus 350, I don't think anybody, I don't think Aljamain's minus 350 to anybody on the planet including Peter Yan. I don't think he's that... I don't think he's drawing dead in this fight. I think if you're giving me three to one, I, I'll take that. I'll take three to one in this one. Uh, second reason is because I feel like the approach has to be different for all Jermaine's path to success. And I feel like it will be. I think um, this, in my opinion, this should, for all Jermaine, he should make this a grapple-heavy affair only. Don't expend so much time trying to mix it up with strikes. Pewter's probably the best boxer in the UFC, especially at uh, Bantamweight. If he, can get the, if he can drag this fight to the ground and make it a submission match, I feel like Aljamain can squeeze his ass out. And I'll take Aljamain to win this fight by submission. That's my pick. What's up? So... Uh, so. I'm a little bit different. If you watch that first round and their first matchup, the first round there, Aldermain was dominating that first round. He easily won that first round by a significant margin. Now, Jan's always known to be a slow starter, almost like a downloader. He's downloading the first round and a half, and then he kicks it up from there. So, is that a significant... Thing to look at or not who knows but Al Jermaine had the right sauce standing on the feet and he was very aggressive he was putting it on him I think the main mistake that he made was cardio wise I think he put so much out there trying to win the title the first time that he wore himself out in that first round and just couldn't keep up for the rest I think if he kept a stable pace and mixed up his grappling like he was trying to do in the uh, later rounds, I think Al Jermaine can actually walk away with this pretty victorious. I think it's going to be close, but I think Al Jermaine by submission also. I think he'll wear him down and submit him probably somewhere in the third. Because I think if he goes into the fourth or fifth, I think Jan's going to have enough on him. Them so the consensus is we're going with Algermain. I am. I don't I'm I'm going with this only from wow. a betting standpoint and wow. from I already I, we weren't here when I said what I said in the beginning. I think Pewter is the best bantamweight weight in the world. He's the uncrowned king. However, I think in this matchup specifically on Saturday. He's not going to be the better man on Saturday. I, I, so on I Saturday, believe, I believe he's, getting, he's getting squeezed out. Has the tools to win this one. I really do. He mm-hmm. proved it in that first round when he fought him. That's that's how I look at it. If he can maintain his energy levels, that's the thing with with these guys. Like, his pace in the first round against fucking Peter Gon, yo. Insane pace. I'm surprised he didn't win that fight. And they got knee in the head. You know what I'm saying? It was like, it was like high-low. It was like a quick high-low. He went to the lowest of the low. Like, he should have been done. And he wasn't done. So, I don't know, man. This is going to be one of them, like, I'm just on the the roller coaster here to say where it goes straight up. So we'll see what happens. I'm going I think, for Aljermaine, though. 
I think given like that first round, he has so much output that um, it's in the striking department that that probably is why, in, in addition to the nerves, in addition to the championship pressure, that's probably why he gassed because he did throw the kitchen sink at Jan. And let's be real, he didn't do much damage to Jan, no. even though he even though he had all the output. I'm just saying that I think the game plan should be to redirect that energy. Yes. I mean, redirect that energy to the grappling portion and make it more like, you know how we saw last week, well, last time we watched the card, how um, Bone Crusher came out and he was just like all dedicated to grappling. He's like, this is going to be a grapple heavy affair with me doing the, the I'm the hammer here. And I'm going to be my engagement. Thinking, I'm just going to strike. Nah, scoop. Nope. So, I'm grappling. Period. So, That's what I think. That this should be the approach for all Jermaine. Very few strikes at all, and make it grapple only. Pure is a great, a good grappler as well. But I think if I'm going to give the edge, if any edge is to all Jermaine, I think he has the edge in grappling. If and if he wrestle. makes it, if he makes it wrestling only, and submissions only, I think he has a a, a very very clear path to victory. However, if he can't. If he cannot, people are gonna fuck him up, bro. <laughs> he can't. Hey, Straight bro, up. I'm I'm with USA. 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 Uh, Let's US. go. Let's go. Oh, I'm all I'm all aboard the Aljamain train on this one. I'm all aboard. Aljamain train all the way. Squeeze okay. his ass out. In fact, I'm gonna get a, I might get a shirt that says squeeze his ass out. <laughs> squeeze him there out. Go. Squeeze him <laughs> out. I, I'm here for America, bro. That's all. Yes, that sir. Is. I'm cheering no. for the USA, baby. Let's go. Um, this next one, we won't have we don't have an option to go USA. We because would, we got we would we we would have well, no, we, we would how have, we would have. Well, we don't. We don't. We don't. Have one. We don't. Got one we don't Cause this is uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. I know. I know. I know. Taking on. I know. The zombie. Look at your boy. Crap. Chan Song Jung. Look, dog. He's minus seven twenty. Most people credit score ain't that good. Man, I'm, I'm betting on Sun Kim's cousin, bro. I don't. He's not even on some books. I don't care. I'll bet like he's not even. On. I'll bet like twenty two dollars on him. He plus five hundred. I'll bet twenty two dollars on him, bro. Because Amen. I just want to see Max fight, and I was hoping uh something would happen. It's bad I don't know. I that. don't know how. I can't even give you a real reason why I feel this way, except for the fact that I just want him to win. I want I'm taking Korean win. Zombie. I'm taking Korean Zombie for a quarter of a unit, and I'm lumping him into my my dog parlay. I'm getting all dogs. Ooh! Okay. 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 All okay, dogs. Okay, okay, okay. I'm taking Sterling, Gilbert, and Jung. I'm lumping them together and I'm betting them individually. Oh, fuck it, macaroni and fuck it. I was gonna say like, how bad would the whole, the whole, when you hear when you hear me, the whole MMA world would crumble if all underdogs won today or on Saturday. You got Zombie winning, you got Alzheimer winning, and you got Gilbert Burns winning. What would happen? There, yo, chaos. They wouldn't. They wouldn't even know what they like. Think they're like ah. They'll go crazy. Would be so so happy. Me too. I'd be going crazy just because I'd be so happy. Me Not too. because I hate any of these fighters, but just because I like the underdogs in all these fights. Yes, me too. A lot. I love like, each underdog. The only one that's like hard to like not go with is Hamza. God damn it, man! No, I'll, I'll, I'll be—I'll keep it straight up. I've been on all these—all these, all the, all these favorites. I all these favorites are favorites for a reason. I think Hamzat is—he's stylistically. Um, they fight ten times. I say Hamzat wins seven to ten easy, no problem. I, I like and I, I feel—I like, feel that I feel that same way for all three of these guys. They're the for sure favorite. I'm betting on that twenty percent chance, that thirty percent chance that they're gonna lose. And um, 
by the time they get there, I'm gonna be so fucked up that I hopefully I just I wake up and I'm and it's and it's all true. It was all a dream, and it feels good. Look, man, I'm not gonna lie. I I just want to see zombie pressure the shit out of him, land a good shot, knock him out. To be honest, get that knockout. They'll run it back, but for a short period of time, I can call Korean Zombie champ for one, just once. I think he deserves it, and I want it. I want to cheer it on. Then, then whoever can have it back, whatever. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Here's another question: Do you think this fight goes the distance? No. Either way, you're taking it under. Either way. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You can't. Um, wow. Do you think the Burns Chamaya fight goes over one and a half rounds? Burns Chamaya mm -hmm. over one and a half rounds. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. I think that goes the distance. Fair, fair, fair. I, I, I told you. I think it's going to be like an RDA type fight. I think. I think Burns is actually going to take down Chamaev. And just basically ground and pound his tough ass. Well, three rounds straight. If you pick Aljamain and Gilbert and you put $100, how much do you think you'd win if they both win? I don't know, betting math. You will win $2,000 if you bet $100 on both Aljamain and Gilbert to win and they both win. If you take them, if you, if you, if you take them together, Say I'm say all Jermaine and Gil, put a hundred dollars down. Both must win for you to win. Two K, one hundred to win two K. And on that note, I brought it back. That's good money right there. Well, how do you think this this fight actually goes though between Vulcan, uh, Vulcan zombie, uh, Chan Zung Chung? John, have you say his name? Yes. Um, I don't know, man. This is one of those fights. Like, you can't call it. Like, obviously, you could go with the obvious champion, right? This dude, he's killing it right now. But, with Zombie, bro, it's like, who has really fucked up Zombie from, like, start to finish? Name one person that literally fucked up Zombie as soon as the bell rang. Like, they dominated him the whole fight. He always catches the L's on some random shit. Like, really, he does. He's like... That's fair. He does. Like, he always catches the L on some random shit. Like, he's in the fight. That's why I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he wasn't. He was kind of in the fight with Aldo, even on, on his first title shot. Yeah, but his fucking except shoulder. Except for his shoulder. Like, exactly. Like, he always yeah. catches some random shit that happens to him. Same with Ortega. Ortega's probably the closest thing that you got to, like, a good zombie. He won. He was winning that fight until he got fucked yeah. up. Yeah. Same with Yair. Yair Rodriguez. Same thing. Actually, he know. dominated that fight. Until he got hit with some fucking, like, Hail Mary type fucking elbow. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, just, as much as he says he practiced that fucking elbow, that was a Hail Mary fucking random ass elbow. Oh, that was a Hail Mary, bro. <laughs> like, ain't no way. Like, fuck it, bro. Damn, fuck your shit. Oh, uh, let me reach down deep into the toolkit. This might work. Yeah. <laughs> no, bro. Like, no. But he did have a good matchup with Holloway. But that's matchups, man. Like, I'm not the fucking MMA fucking genius with the math shit. That matchup was a great matchup. But it just shows you how good Holloway is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only reason why Zombie's here is because Holloway's hurt and he's the last guy on the win. So it makes sense. But man... How do you guys feel if, like, the whole, literally, like, imagine Gilbert, Ruin, Gilbert Burns wins, right? Aljamain wins. And then 
zombie wins? What's going to happen? It will be sensational. Do we do we got to hide under cars or something? What's like what's going to happen there? Is like the whole fan base going to like flip cars over? What what's going to happen? Like it's going to be bananas. And we're going to be there for that. That's the thing. Actually, I really yeah. think I really think if Gilbert Burns wins, bro, it's going to be nuts. All I know is a uh, little A Bravo is going to fucking Woo! That boy might not ever talk to me again. I don't know. <laughs> to, to be fair, if Gilbert Byrne wins that fight, I don't think that one will change too much. I think it'll just be the narrative will basically be Chimaev was thrown to the number two guy a little too soon. Yeah. I think that's all the narrative's gonna be. He'll, he'll come back, he'll win a couple more fights, he'll stay close to the top ten, maybe make another fight in the top ten, and I think he'll be fine. To be honest, I think they'll just say he was thrown in a little too deep, a little too soon. But if if Aljamain wins, though, that'll turn the world all kinds across. Oh yeah, to I'm be going honest, with Aljamain, bro. After that's no, so all mine. I, I, I think we yeah, I hundred percent agreed with Mark. I think if Gil wins, it'll be like, oh, what is number two versus number eleven to the to most people? But the hype train part will be derailed. Um, right. If Aljamain if Al finishes Jan, Woo, bro, wait. MMA Twitter is gonna uh, Woo, MMA Twitter wait. is gonna explode because like wait. most people are just um, saying he's dead meat. He's dead in the water. Yeah. He's paper champ without really realizing how good he actually is. I'm like, yeah, Pewter's a fucking man. Don't get it twisted. But Aljamain's no scrub at all. He's championship material himself. Um, now, for Volkanovski and Chan Sung Jung, bro, I guarantee you, if Korean Zombie wins, that place is going to erupt. Because I guarantee you, most people are going to be betting on him, given how big of a dog he is. Most people going there. We, the the we average person is going to be betting on him. Like, a lot of Koreans. That's all I got to say. say. I was like, this being Jacksonville, Florida, we an Asian winning a championship. A lot of Koreans. It, it's gonna go crazy. Actually, yeah. as a matter of fact, if y'all want to run some uh, Korean barbecue for lunch that day, sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. I'm in. All I gotta say is, um, we'll know some people in the crowd with uh, Korean flags. That's Correct. All I say. <laughs> but yeah. The flag I'm going to be wearing, if I have a flag, is the Aljamain Surin flag because he represents the United States of America, and that's where we go. Yep. All day, every day. Hey, I don't care what anyone says. The United States of America is the best place for MMA, period. I know that not all of our uh, champions are from the United States, <laughs> but 90% of them train here. And all I gotta say is, if Aljamain wins that shit, which I hope he does, I'm going for my man. Because we've been watching him for a long time. The Funk Master. Can yeah. I get, can I get a chain somewhere? Hopefully they're selling the chains when I walk in the door. I'm, I don't know, we'll see. But you're talking about, like, old school times where I thought that... Al Jermaine and fucking Ally Quinta were going to skyrocket and be champs around the same time. Uh, that's a long time ago, nah, to be I, fair. Ally and one faded out kind of quick. After watching Ally Quinta barely ski past um, Jorge. Oh, he got, he got robbed. Jorge got robbed. Yeah. That's that's when I knew, like, yeah. If Jorge is gonna be like this on a loss and then Ally is gonna like soak it up like that, yeah, I know. I know there's a difference. There's a difference in I fighters. I gave him a slight pass right there just because he's a Jersey boy. But you know, he, he, he definitely lost that fight. And I, I at that time, you know, 
uh, Sarah Longo's camp was all the rage because of Weidman and all that. So there was a little hype there. All right, so what happens if Korean Zombie wins this fight? Rematch. It's a rematch, right, guys? That's what I'm feeling. No. no. What happens is Volk needs some time off to recoup, and Holloway fights the zombie. For what? Oh, for the title. If, the if title. Chang, Zung, Chang Sung Jung, <laughs> Sun Kim's cousin. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, son. I had to do it. Or wishful thinking on my part, but it's most likely going to be a rematch. That's your man's, though. That's, That's my man's. man's. That's Th- your those man's. are both my man's. Would I love to see Holloway versus the zombie? Oh, Fuck bro. yes, I would. Especially uh, for a title. Oh, yeah. You have no idea. Sun Kim would absolutely be on the podcast if that fight was happening. Like I don't care who you are. You're gonna you're gonna experience the Mosey versus Sun Kim affair. Yes. <laughs> That's why like if I'm I'm like secretly going for Chang Sun Jung, aka Korean Zombie to win this fight. It's because I want that fight to happen. Cause I mean, I'll be zombies gonna be pieced up. That's how I see it. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I know how this fight should go. I know how it should go. Everyone knows how this fight should go. But I've never hid my bias on my favorite fighters. Me either. And (laughs) I'm going zombie all the way. And I think he does have the tools to actually get it done. But it's going to be a steep hill. This fight, I, I feel like it's going to be a decision some way, some way how. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to be a decision. What if Jung out-wrestles Volkanovski, though? Even better. <laughs> Even better. I mean, he's training with Triple C right now. Man, he don't even know when he's talking <laughs> to him. Come on, bro. <laughs> he don't even know. Neither, neither did Wei Lee, but what did Wei Lee come back with when she fought Rose again? All of a sudden, she was a wrestler. That's what I'm saying. Like, they don't know. It's great, though. It is. That camp's actually kind of on the rise. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, What are they called? Fight Ready. Yeah, Fight Ready. Yeah, Fight Ready. Mm -hmm. Man. Woo! Like, I just imagine. Like, they already got Korean Zombie there. Like, I don't know how much he could add to that, but just imagine training with that dude. You know what I mean? His skill level, right? That's got to bring up your skill level already. Oh, Think, think about the people they have there, though. John I mean, Jones. Shevchenko. That's all I got to say. John, John Jones, Jones, Shevchenko. Shevchenko trains there quite often. Uh, Henry Cejudo. Um... Figueredo trains there. Exactly. Uh, who else is there? There's, oh, Yuri. Yuri? Yeah. Like, what? Like I watched the uh, countdown and I saw, like, they were naming off. I'm like, oh yeah, I know who they were there. And they they should they they showed off Yuri. I was like, oh my god, this dude's about to kill everybody. Right? He's our fucking like guy. But that's not our guy that nobody else knows about. They don't know about Yuri. But they will know soon. They will know soon. Because our dude was fucking Glover. We wanted that fucking victory for Glover, right? We yes. all wanted that victory for Glover. But uh, he's got to be the sacrificial lamb. And it sucks. I told you. It sucks. I wanted that victory and that retirement. Go he didn't retire. Top. He didn't retire. I wanted that retirement, but I get it. I get it. If you're going to become champ and you, you're having your success at the end, the tail end of your career, why not? And bro, is it really that bad? Like, bro, if he defends it against Yuri, he deserves to retire. He really does. But let's be honest, though. Even if 
even if he doesn't defend it, is it really that bad of a career ender to just be like, look, I was champ. Right when I lost my belt, I called it a career. Do you really want to do like a Michael Bisbing, lose your title, and then take another fight and get embarrassed? I mean, if I was champion, I would like to defend it once, then retire. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. That's just me. But I don't know how the minds of these actual champions work. So, I don't Fighters know. are fighters. They're always going to yeah. want to go till they can't. Yeah. Well, the, pay, the payday is so much higher as champion that I feel like he should ride the wave until that wave is done. Because, I mean, think about it. Um, he's not going to get a bigger payday. Um, outside of being a champion. And I think the game will get rid of you when it's ready anyway. You don't have to accelerate it. You don't have to go, I retire or anything like that. And once the game's done with you, it's done. And you'll know. You don't have to do it early. Nah, Normally, I was I'd be on more that. more of a, the, uh, the championship status. Like, okay, I won the belt, right, from this hard opponent. And then I defended it. That's that's the point I was trying to go with. Like I defended yeah. my title, unlike Conor McGregor, right? And I, I think we uh, don't give him enough credit. I don't think he see. I, I mean, he might look. Yuri Prohaska is awesome. We know this. Um, mm. So is um, Alexander Rakic. He's all he got. He got some skills, but. I don't think Glover sees it that way, man. Like we we looking at it from the that he on the outside looking in, thinking that he can just they can these guys are gonna run through him, and that he, I mean, obviously he beat a tough Jan Blahovich, um at for, for champion, but these guys are much closer, much more closely matched up than we give it credit for. No, I I feel like Glover, bro, he got that old man strength. He don't see nobody. He's the champ. You know what I'm saying? The only person that he probably sees in his way to being like the champ, like for real, is John Jones. That's right. how I feel. That's how I feel. I'm not at all trying to discredit Glover at all. Like, I wanted him to be champ. I honestly thought, or I honestly think that he's a better champion for this division than Jan was. I, I didn't. Qu- I don't question Glover nearly as much as I question Jan. In all honesty, I just I like Glover so much. I would have loved that storybook ending for him. That's all. That's all it is. I mean, I'll watch every fight that he's ever in, yeah. whether he continues to go on, whether or not. I just wanted that storybook ending. And if he can win this one and retire on it, I'll love that storybook ending for him there too. I mean, for me as a fan, I'm just purely like I, I love his story as well. But for me as a fan, I want to see him t- ride the wave as long as he can. If, if he if he were defending the belt against whoever, and then again against whoever, let's say he beats Yuri, let's say he beats Rackage, this is only good for him because yep. like his career um already it's already been pretty legendary. He already had a, a like he had a nice legendary career, um and yeah, what what it would be nice. To cap that off with a, a title victory, right? The end it there, but we are. I think too often we see champions a- after their career is over, and you see them doing things like in the way of like Tito Chuck, where they're still fighting these like sidecar events for money. I don't want to see that. I want to see them make as much money as they can. So when they actually do retire, they can go off into the sunset and really enjoy their life beyond fighting. Uh, and, and unless they like really want to do something silly and have some, you know, some kind of like sideshow type deal where it's like, only one you know, did that though. Yeah. Only only one guy really retired. As from US, was. from from mixed martial arts. I think GSP had the, the okay. best blueprint where he really, yep. He really walked away, but then again, he didn't. He came back and fought Bisbing in middleweight. He, he walked act. away twice. He walked right. away twice at the heights of his career. Yep. Like, right. you can you can kind of argue that he yeah. won the middleweight strap at the weaker point of the middleweight division, just because it was Bisbing. You know, damn. 
But he did. Let's be honest. Biz being, Biz being caught astray for no reason. <laughs> what I think I think Izzy, Izzy against GSP would have been a, a very intriguing matchup. Bullshit. Izzy could kick the shot at uh, GSP. I don't, know. I don't know. I personally think that mm. if if we had like Yoel Romero up there or uh, Robert Whitaker, even Izzy. Via that murder. Any of those people, that would have been huh? a great matchup. Romero, Mer- Romero probably is the first MMA death. Is yeah. the first? No, 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 first? no, no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The the GSP's, best matchup. GSP. GSP is uh, GSP is amazing, though. Beautiful. GSP is amazing, bro. Don't get it twisted. I'm not. GSP, I'm not taking anything. For, uh, I'm not trying GSP? to take anything away from him. There's a reason they have weight classes, and that's that will be exposed clearly. Oh no, he, no, no, no! He picked the no, right no, no, guy, the no, right no, no, guy. No, no, no. Even Bisping, yeah. oh no, even Bisping didn't want to fight URL. I'm in Manchester. Where are you? Yeah. Where are you? You want? You were scared for me. I feel all GSP versus Robert Whitaker would have been the best matchup for welterweight or 185. Maybe, Whichever maybe, they, they maybe, maybe. Like, a good I don't match. think so. I, I say Edge Whitaker for sure. I'm I'm betting the farm I, on Whitaker. I, I agree. Don't I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, no. I don't know the result. I don't know what the result will be. I just know what I would lean heavily Whitaker. No, I do know the result. It would be Whitaker heavily on, on that one. Because let's be honest, this isn't like... If, if this was happening back then, I'd be on a different mindset. But now that we've already seen GSP at 185, how he struggled with the weight cut or the increase of weight, how he struggled in the weight division, you know. Because let's be honest, Michael Bisbing was not doing terrible in that fight before he got caught in that choke. He was fucking up GSP every now and then. But... I think GSP I just don't think it's his approach. weight division, huh? Yeah, GSP took the wrong approach to that. What, what other approach could he have taken? He tried to build weight for that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I just don't see GSP as a middleweight. That's all. It's not. It's that's not all. that he's not good. I just don't think he's a middleweight. I think he he picked the only middleweight that he could have a that champion that he could. He didn't pick him, obviously. <laughs> he didn't no, pick no, him. No, it's all, not, all according to Bisming, he said he picked him. But he didn't. He didn't pick the um, middleweight Bisping champion. However, he never moved up before. Bisping he never moved cried. up before. Bisbee cried on that interview. Bro, he never yeah. picked. He never moved to the middleweight, middleweight before. He saw a spot. He saw a yeah. spot. He could have. He could have moved up a long time ago. I think Anderson Silva beats the shit out of him, if, even in his prime. So, like, that, that's that's my point. I'm not saying that it's not because it's GSP. He's just not a middleweight man. He's not. Yeah. He, is he is he will fuck him up? Yoel Romero, Yoel probably kills him. Um, and then I, I don't think he's. A, I think he. I, I think um, Rob Whitaker beats the shit out of him too. I, I don't think. It's, but it's not because he's not skilled or anything like that. He's just. He's just not a middleweight. I, I love that. That's guy. it. No, no, no. He's a, he's a great welterweight. Robert Whitaker is because Whitaker was a welterweight before. True, and and Whitaker has L's at welterweight. But all right, I'll put it to this way. I think the GSP would struggle against Calvin. At middleweight, I don't. It's not. It's not because of his GSP. Too. We saw. Wait, 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 wait. Before GSP gracefully bowed out, he did get wrecked by uh, John Hendricks. Let's keep it. Let's keep it on it. Now, keep it up. But that was. Where do you, you know, guys want to uh, fall on the uh, whole drug testing thing? Because that was a big one. Hey man, they were all on drugs. Brock Lesnar was smashing skulls. They were all on drugs, and he got beat by a dude that eats bean burritos before the fight. So, I, so. all I gotta say is, like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if the if you look at if you look at if you look at Kane versus Lesnar, and you you think that Kane wasn't juiced to the gills no, before I ain't even about that, it. not Kane, not Kane, sorry, that Lesnar wasn't juiced to fuck up. Kane maybe too, but that Lesnar wasn't juiced up. Then come on, man, I'm Lesnar, not making that. I'm not talking about the dude that fought GSP though. The dude that fought GSP, oh, yeah. definitely at the time. I, I think GSP. Definitely I think GSP. I think GSP beat multiple juice heads. Well, yeah. all I gotta say, I is don't disagree. The one guy that fought GSP and won. He should have won, but GSP. He won. lost. Yeah, he lost, but he did some damage. He did some physical damage. <laughs> oh, physical. He did physical damage. Yeah. 
GSP was like, if I could, if this what a win feels like, I'm gone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm right. was like, GSP got I'm the out dub, of this shit. but after <laughs> everything that happened, I don't know, man. Like if they're not yeah. on juice, I don't know what it is. I don't. I listen. I I, I can't. I can't say either well, I will, way. I will say because I will say that a lot of guys that GSP beat definitely was on some shit too. And he 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 went through the welterweight ranks back then. Like he beat everybody. Well, the and there was some good after the one guy that should have beat GSP was very poor. Once you saw this showed up, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah, no, he did. No, no. There's no denying that Johnny Hendricks uh, post your pre uh, post your side as a different guy. Oh, yeah, I ain't saying I'm that. just saying all all I'm saying all I'm saying is that was at welterweight, bro. Who knows what the fuck Joel Romero's on? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? He yo, I will fucking yo will kill this man, man. It's it's, it's not right. It I ain't know. right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't I'll, want to. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll say I'll this. Smoke. I don't want no smoke. I, yo, uh, yo. I don't think that Yoel Romero is currently using all the juice. I don't think he is. I think he's a clean fighter now. But I will Jesus. say when when he was wrestling in his home country a long time ago. They did all kinds of experiments with juice back then, and that shit is long term. Jesus, <laughs> pray for him. And he has the power of God. Pray for he him. Soldier of God. So pray for know. GSP. I love I you. Kill him. I love you. GSP, go back to Canada. I love okay. you. They will let him in the gates. I killed him. Jesus, <laughs> say hi to Jesus for me. Exactly. <laughs> hey, <bro. laughs> oh man, yeah. I think. Listen, no, man. I, I, I love no. GSP. I think he's one of the goats. I think he's one of the best of all time at welterweight. Let's just leave it at that. That man. I also think that he is the smart, one of the smartest fighters of all time, For and sure. he uses intelligence to win to become double champ. For sure, he chose. And I think fight. even Michael Bisping understands that. It pains me to say that about GSP because. He bopped BJ Penn. That's all I gotta say. Facts. Facts. facts yeah. Facts. You know what I mean? You know, Hawaiian fighters and me, yeah. they, they go in and in. I love all Hawaiian fighters. Like, but yo, 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 bro, GSP, he was the man. Like, who really yeah. smoked GSP? Matt Sarah. And what happened to <laughs> Matt Sarah after that? He got barbecued. Exactly. Like, who can you say? Is not the best dude, and I hate to say it. That's that's a bad thing about it. Like GSP <laughs> did his thing. To date, to date, as of today, he's the best welterweight of all time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think there is a possibility that someone could take over that that uh, for welterweight for welterweight for right? welterweight for welterweight. Camaro, Camaro's, Camaro's beating down his neck. No, I love right. Kamaru, bro. Kamaru's pound for pound currently in my Well, if Kamaru, if I would say if yeah. Kamaru rips off like three three more title defenses, maybe four, that's the best all time. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, if he beats everybody they put against him currently, yeah. yeah. I say three, three, three or four more times. You gotta remember, defense. GSP's thing was like, yeah, he had some finishes, right? But once he got the title again. What did he do? Decision, 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 decision. 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 But he dominated them, but this, it was decision, decision, decision. And you got Anderson over here. Finish, 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 finish. What do you, how do you look at that? When you're fighting the best in the world, it's a little bit more difficult to get this, the finish. I was, I don't give him too much shit for that. Um, but as a fan watching it, no, the guys who get in the finishes are more exciting for like, sure. Like to me, Anderson yeah. was the better champion, bro. Like he killed everybody he fought until later on, and then he started doing capoeira and shit in the fucking match. Like, I, I think don't know he what would you say anyway. had a more difficult competition though, who? GSP or Anderson? Because Anderson's competition wasn't bad, How can but you was it him? as? Oh, I'm no, not no. blaming him. I'm no, not no, blaming no. him. I'm just asking. 
just purely comp comp wise, was the middleweight division better than the welterweight division back then? I would say uh, the middleweight. I would say it was, I they know. were. Comp- I don't know. It's I would say that. Same. I would say it was. It's yeah, I would say even. They're, they're about comparable. The hardest division um, back in the day though was uh, definitely light heavyweight. It was yeah, two like heavyweight. Two or five was best division. And fucking John Jones said like, "Gimme, gimme, 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 gimme." I smoked all y'all. Right. Pretty much. So that's why this is a very when you go pound for pound, that's what makes it difficult because John Jones was fucking killing all those people. He killed every former champ, literally, and future champ. Yeah, like and future champ. Because uh, among those list of names we we that he of champs he beat, one's the current champ. Who? Correct. Oh, Glover. Yeah. 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 yeah yep. Yep. He so Glover. it's it's yeah. So when, when you're consistently fighting the best people in the world. And beating them, you make you're kind of undeniable. I will say GSP specifically because because we went on this whole long rant about like the that whole ma- that matchup. GSP was specifically did he was so much more he was so dominant over that welterweight division. Uh, was that division exactly like? Um, was it deep? Probably not. You can't you but can't call him for it. Probably not. No, no, it's not. You, you, you fight. You fight who's in front of you. That's not his fault. Uh, was that division? Nah. Deep? Probably not. But um, it it wasn't. It was just as shallow as middleweight. Well, I mean, I wasn't even trying to say either of them were that shallow. I was really just trying to pose the question of which one was a harder competition when you're talking about Anderson Silva versus GSP because this is the old school goat competition right always we used to always talk about gsp versus anderson silva who's the greatest of all time you know caveat john jones rising up you know but who had the harder skills who had the harder matchups um i'm going to say john jones all day every day oh yeah what are you going to pound because okay if you're going pound for pound you're assuming that um their skills would translate to if you to a heavier fighter, right? So if you had a GSP at two hundred and five pounds, what's his skill set look like? What does that fighter look like? We already know what John Jones looked like at two hundred five because he competed at two hundred five. But if you take mm-hmm. Anderson Silva, a bigger man with Anderson Silva's skill set, that's even that's pretty scary to me. I mean, GSP's yeah. intellect can win a lot of fights, but. When you talk about a heavyweight guy, you it's it only you only need to get hit a few times. Yeah, I, I don't well, like GSP at eighty five. I don't mind Anderson at two oh five. Right. Well, I mean well, uh, bro, we, we watched Anderson's first fight in my old crib when he fought at two oh five. He slept the dude. Sandman? Urban, Urban. Urban. Yeah, he slept him. But I don't think that, Anderson's that has true. nothing to do that. Well, I don't think Anderson's a true 205er, though. No, no, no. no I think, no. like, that he's was just a dude. A, just, like, I'm here. I'll do his job. Yeah. I'll do job. Yeah. John Joe? I mean, if you t- listen, wait, 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 let's, let's, let's do this. Let's say you put. Um, Whose resume is uh, better? Actual, an actual 205er, just with his skill set. No, no. Yeah. What does oh, that look like? Oh, my God. Mighty Mouse? Oh, just Maybe. an actual 205. Shit, Mighty, Mighty Mouse, Mouse is the greatest of all time. Period. <laughs> Mighty Mouse? Like, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's no one better than Mighty like, Mouse. Like, pound for pound wise, it's hard to debate. Well, actually, I also like uh, Volkanovski. And it's hard for me to say that, you know, Hawaiian shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, in my opinion, John Jones or Mighty Mouse? Who's your Who's your guy? Who's your guy? Like pound for pound. Like say if I'm a hundred thirty five pounds, I'm Mighty Mouse, and I'm fighting another dude. My skill set is fucking immaculate. But also, if I'm where John Jones is gonna fight at, maybe two thirty five, two thirty, two thirty, two forty five. Maybe even two fifty five. I don't know what John Jones is doing because we don't know. He's fighting at light heavyweight currently. We don't know if he's gonna fight heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Pound for it says pound. Says he'll be ready for international fight week. Pound for pound, skill wise, I'm always gonna take like all the fucking danger from fighting these little ass dudes. Mm-hmm. All these guys at one thirty five. 
and lower are dangerous as hell compared to dudes that are like one dimensional at 205 pounds or more tell me i'm wrong yeah tell me i'm wrong please tell me no you're absolutely right but it's almost unfair because one of demetrius johnson's biggest assets is his speed but that speed's not going to carry over to 205 that speed's not going to carry over to the bigger weight classes as much but there's the problem but here's the but john jones resume of victories over former champions and champions of the ufc like bro he beat literally everybody that you could possibly say besides chuck liddell and tito you know what i'm saying in the ufc like every good champion in the ufc he smoked who 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 at light heavyweight was better than john jones I'll wait. Dustin. I'll wait. I mean, but, I mean, but then, but then they can argue. I'll wait. But then they can, I'll wait. But then they can, <laughs> can argue I'll that wait. there are guys that are better than DJ at um thirty five. Thirty five, yes. Now, now, well, now I, like now. So who do, so who do was in his era? So who no, 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 no. Twenty five, not thirty five. Twenty. Twenty five. Twenty five. I mean, yeah. Twenty five. Oh, uh, he beat Cejudo twice. Now they're one and one, and I like I like him. I like Mighty Mouse over Cejudo a third time. I think I watched he beat the him fight. twice. I watched the fight. I mean, I see where they leaned with it. You know, they yeah. leaned with it. But <laughs> either way, I like Mighty Mouse over Cejudo again. I'm going to go conspiracy theorist just because I love Mighty Mouse so much real quick. Does anyone think that he wanted to lose that fight? No, I don't think so. No way. He's, no, no way. Why? No way. Why I don't not? think he wanted to lose. I think he didn't care. Uh, pride. Period. I, I, I think, no, I don't even think it was a pride thing. I think he didn't care. No, I, I, I think he. I think every no fighter is going in there thinking about like, not at that level at least. It's going in there thinking about like I want to lose for a reason. I think like it was I more lose, of like it's a, a win-win situation for losing. Like he, nah, I think have, he, I think, he had nothing to lose. That's how that I fight was that. so. That fight was so close that there's no way that he felt that way. I, 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 I maybe I just, I feel that way. I don't think that he. I think the way I think he felt he broke I, the record, and then from there on, he's like, it is what it is. Okay. But I mean, think of how much he had to gain by losing. Exactly. He like so he much. had so much more to gain by losing than winning. He's already the goat. Like he's already has the most title defenses, and the odds of that being broken are. Not great, you know, the most title defenses. He's already way above, yeah. But at that point, you know, you're getting paid, I think at the time he was getting paid, like, somewhere around 400 grand, 450 a fight at the time for his championship fights. Or he could go over to one, easy transition, Make millions. Like, come on. And not only is it a promotion that respects him because he always felt disrespected by the UFC, you know, not only do you have a division where they keep talking about shutting it down because your champion's so fucking boring, you know. You know, like, um, on the Ariel show, he was talking about how, like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You're this champion, but you're not getting no pay-per-view points. They don't put us on pay-per-view. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He right. Was, he, was hit, he was hitting on that. He yeah, because, I mean. Some stuff. Yeah, they, they did him like mm-hmm. that. Because think about how many pay-per-views was Demetrius Johnson on? Zero. Not very many. One. Actually, was... one. One. Correct. When he need uh, Cejudo in the chest. One. Right. One. And. That's the only time I remember Demetrius Johnson on the fucking pay per view. And watching... they gave that pay per view because of Cejudo, not him. Yeah, I think both of y'all was there when we watched it at Ale House. Mm-hmm. I believe. I believe. I like. I can't recall, but I remember I was at Ale House, and I was like, "Oh, that boy need him in the ribs." You know what I'm saying? Right. But that was just Mighty Mouse, bro. All the other times he was a fight night champion. 
and that the the part about that is like he's not the guy to go out his way and trash talk anybody, his opponent or whatever. He's just gonna smoke him as soon as they get right. in there. But coming and, back to the whole pound for pound list, sorry, Mark, you're good. I really feel like you got the high spectrum with John Jones, and you got the the lower end. With Mighty Mouse. So is, that's the pound for pound. Because you know pounds are different. Weighing things. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to go. I'm, uh, yeah. yeah, bro. Like pounds mean weight. I'm going to go over here. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm out of here, bro. You've been watching that Moon Knight. Watching that scale tilt. <laughs> no, bro, my boy. seriously, bro. Like, okay, if you had a guy with all the skills at maybe 170, that's a, a great weight class, right? Or 180. With Mighty Mouse skills? Oh, my God. Like, everything that Mighty Mouse has. Like, all attributes, everything. Cardio, strength, all that shit. How good would he be? Kill everybody, right? Kill everybody, period. I think he would kill everybody in lightweight would be the best possibility. I, I think he might smoke everybody in, like, two weight classes for sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I mean, that we got somebody maybe. His biggest his biggest skill set is his speed, his speed, right? That's probably his biggest attribute. I mean, he's technically great as well. He yeah, he's technically tall. perfect. Right. He's technically great as well. So if you, if you just – have a fast heavyweight that's technically great. Um, we did have one of those. And they yeah, Cyril, good. Well, yeah, Cyril Gaon is basically that, right? Yeah, he just got scooped and put it on the ground. But, but Mighty Mouse also was a good wrestler, and he also had good submission skills. He um, was very well-rounded. The most well-rounded correct. fighter, period. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine a, the equivalent, if I can think of an equivalent. Oh, equivalent of Mighty Mouse at higher weight classes. So hard, right? Wait, I guess the only equivalent that you can even make would be uh, JBJ. Good, good wrestling, decent strike. Oh, strong, good wrestling, great submissions. Good, I don't know, good, great wrestling, decent submissions, good ground and pound, well, excellent ground and pound, good stand-up, good fight IQ. That's good like chin. the spectrum, though. That's the strong spectrum. chin. That's right. He wasn't, maybe not, not explosive, not super fast, but definitely not slow at all. Like fast enough, especially for two hundred five. There wasn't many guys that were beating him in speed. But I think when you watch the little guys fight at like the one twenty fivers, they're just so much faster um, than the bigger guys in general. I don't think that. I think I think I think once you scale up, though, that leaves. But it's the spectrum, though. It's like how how do you call that? And it's like you you, you see you see examples of it. You see though. Well, but you see examples of it in other sports where you see bigger guys being fast for being a big guy. They're still not as, as fast as the smaller guys. Well, like you might, come you know what I mean? Like, like these, like us, like us, like bro. We see this shit. We've been yeah. seeing this for a long time. Cyril, even as, as fast as Cyril is, he's still not as explosive as his weaknesses. Is very glaring. Well, as, if, I'm just, 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 just mean, it's, it's actual speed. Just watching him move around, yeah. he's yeah, still it, not it, as explosive as like a 55er. No, no, he's no. Just, well, no, he's just fast for a big guy. But we, I even think it's a little bit of an exaggeration. I think it's also an exaggeration when they're always like, "Oh, Serial Gone moves around like he's a fucking middleweight." Both. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. I think he moves around more like a light heavyweight. Yeah, but I think there's also a big gap between how a light heavyweight moves around and a heavyweight moves around. Right, and and the thing is, but the thing is, it's not necessary. It isn't necessary for him to move around that fast because he's 260 pounds. Yep, like it, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Like I don't give a shit how fast Mighty Mouse is. He's um 125 pounds. (laughs) If you make him right, if you make him 60, if if you make him 250 pounds. With his skill set, he can still get starched by a dude that looks like fucking tied to a boss. He gets starched by from, Simpson, bro. From one, one, one no, because it's just it's one, one, one shot is all it takes. 
That's why when we see this whole pound for pound deal, I think we're talking about skills, like your actual technique and all that stuff. Right. Because that, that can translate. And Mighty Mouse would be awesome, but uh, I mean. No, Mighty Mouse at like any weight, like that skill set is great. Mm hmm. The, the, the part that I think most people would, are going to hate on me for, for saying this, is the only caveat I have in the John Jones situation in this is I honestly think that John Jones isn't as dominant if he didn't have the reach that he has. I think he's still a great fucking tactician. I think he's still a great fighter, but I think he's always had this unnatural reach edge on everybody and then the he's, people that were close to his height he struggled a lot more with not really i mean no, the no, only no, person no. that's the no, only person no. that's even close is gustafson and yeah. Gust um and he beat the fuck out of Gust Gust gustafson the second, second time, time. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. i'm not saying that he's not a terrible fighter yeah. i'm saying fault. that i don't think that the gap is as big if you take away his, well, you know, he's, I don't think he's, he's very great at using his reach. That's a good. Oh. That's a good observation because if you look at it currently, how many people in the light heavyweight division have an eighty-four inch wingspan? Nobody. Exactly. No. But heavyweight, no, no, no. they got it. No, they don't. Who, who has who has eighty-four? No, no, no. I'm pretty sure there's more heavyweights than there are light heavyweights with 80, 80 inch at least. Well, the only one that has what what is um Vol Vol Volkov's reach? He's probably the only one close. I want to say he's like seventy six. Let me check real what, quick. What what I'm saying is like it makes sense. Like his his oh, reach. Volkov's advantage. is at eighty. But it really is his oh. reach advantage the reason why he was like dominating everybody. Well, think about it. Volkov is six foot seven. And his is eighty. What is John Jones' advantage over everybody that is causing the issues? At like heavy pokes weight. and and reach. Was it really his reach? Pokes? <laughs> oh my god! I'm not saying that he would. <laughs> that was a joke. Don't that was because of his framing really for his reach. <laughs> <laughs> I pokes and reach. That's how I, he dominated. I, um. I was gonna say just like his wrestling, but okay. <laughs> Two or five I mean, John Jones is amazing. Right? This, the, this, the sheer amount of times that John Jones sat there through a training camp and then went into a fight and goes, what's your strongest attribute? I'm going to dominate you at your own game. That makes him amazing by himself. I just said the gap isn't as big if you take away his reach. Yeah. I mean, I still yeah, think that he's that. above the rest. I agree with that because, like, no, everybody we mentioned before, none of none of them are doing that. Like, GSP right. isn't doing that. He's not going. He's not going in and beating you at your own game. Yes, Habib, is. Habib isn't going in and beating you at, his, at your own game. Like, he's be he's beating you with what he's good with. Um, he's gonna go in there and be like, I'm the dominant grappler here, and I'm gonna dictate that by being exactly that. Habib. And GSP, and GSP, he's not standing up and making a pure kickboxing fight with a guy who's a pure kickboxer. He's switching it up in time and takedowns. Changing it depends, levels. It depends on which GSP's fight. All of them. I can't think of one where he's like just going there and beating you at your own game only. Like yeah. he's not like he like he's literally going okay. you're a great okay. you're, you're a great you're, you're a great yeah. jiu-jitsu guy. I'm gonna just go to the, I'm not gonna use any of my striking. I'm gonna go straight to the ground with you. And then beat GSP you. He always just, went to the opposite. He always did whatever yeah. you, whatever you're good at. He would take it away. He would take away what you're good at. Well, he but did not, uh, not uh, cross check at really him. bad when they fought for the title. But he, he, uh, he out -boxed, out. right? He out box Koshchek. Koshchek wasn't a, 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 a. He's a wrestler. Exactly. Well, Koshchek was a wrestler. But GSP is so, not a wrestler though. Yeah, he I was, mean, he became one. He, he became, became one of the best. He, he became, became one of the best. Yeah. That boy yeah. knows karate. That's true, but for MMA, he was probably the best version of a wrestler he that said, the Waltz that no the Waltz wrestling. Wrestling saw. I'm a jab. Besides John, besides John Fitch, who was a better wrestler at um one seventy um, in, in GSP's era? Ooh, wee. GSP era at one seventy. Fuck John Fitch. 
but you already canceled him out. Koscheck. All right. And he nullified yeah. Koscheck shit twice. Well, yeah, he, they, 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 it was a kickboxing fight. And Koscheck, Koscheck yeah. fell in love with his hands. Like, yeah. yeah. You oh, right. Robbie Lawler. You're right. They ne- oh, my God. Unless you go, Matt, unless you go Matt Hughes. Matt Hughes has a little bit before. Matt Hughes that's was old said. school, though, man. He's farmer. Yeah. Wrestling. Well, he fought GSP twice, so I just that's the only reason I mentioned him. Three times, right? Three times. Yeah, I was about to say, they fought three times. So GSP lost one of those. He got a dub yeah. on uh, GSP. Facts, mm-hmm. facts, facts. That's, what, man, that's the only reason I mentioned Matt Hughes is like farmer strong, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a difference. They really got, got that no hit more. by a train no more. and came back. Exactly. Come on now. Yeah, you can't fuck with Matt Hughes, bro. He got the yeah. juice. He, he ain't going nowhere. You Motherfucker was like, fuck that fuck. train. I'm coming back to a normal life. You got to hear hard as fuck. <laughs> Stop <laughs> me. Well, uh, are y'all planning on doing any of that fan experience stuff at all? When are any of them? I believe the first one starts tomorrow. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Wednesday, I believe, is the first press conference. You know what I'm saying? I will not be attending none of them, but Saturday, we will link up and figure out what we're going to do. Let's start early. Let me make it all the event. I want to get sauced up early. I want to live. I, don't, I, don't, I want to live. I don't, I don't, I don't want to miss any of the fights. I'll bring you some. I got something for you. I'll bring you some magic. Bro. You no, no, no. I want no magic. I just want no, no, no. It's just a hydration, bro. Like, for hydration. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Because okay. I was about to say, like, I want to be somewhat coherent to see these fights. <laughs> I just want to start. Come around. around. I'm good. I, I mean, I'll park. chill and I'll, I'll, I'll sip and, and have a good time. I want to park early and then walk around. I'll yeah, go we'll with that. It out. We'll figure That's it out. That's the whole point, yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out uh, throughout the week. Even if we start, like, super early, I got to sober up before main card. And mm-hmm. then... <laughs> Look, bro, I'm just... Like like I said, I just want some popcorn. That's all I want. Get this man some popcorn, bro. Like, at 8 o'clock come popcorn. around, I just want popcorn. That's all I want. Because I ain't getting no popcorn last time. I just want popcorn. I want all I want to do is thank all fifty plus of our subscribers for keeping it, you know, showing some love and giving us some views. We appreciate it. Um, you can hit me up, Ashy Knuckle, Ashy at, at Ashy Knuckles MMA, MMA on Twitter. I will ch- I, I do chat in the comments on YouTube. So say something to your boy. So give us some feedback. Hold up. I'm just trying to meet some Australians once I go to uh Buy Store Meta what is it? what's it called? Buy Store Veterans <laughs> Yeah, whatever it's called. The Vice Star Arena. I just wanna meet some Australians, bro. Cause I'm gonna tell them, yo, I'm I'm Hawaiian. What's up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wanna Are see you, what they say. On a scale of one to ten, where'd you gauge your drunk level? When I'm there? But now, right now, now. <laughs> right now, I'm like a three and a half. Three and a half. But I'm trying to be like a nine and a half when I meet these Australians, because oh, you shit. know these Volkanovski fans. <laughs> I'm telling like, yo, bro, a one and now, Holloway. That's what I'm gonna tell them. You gotta go up with the clap. You gotta be like Holloway. Either they're gonna be like, oh, Aussie, you wanna drink some Fosters. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but trash. either way, I'm gonna be like, yo, Holloway. The kind. That's what I'm gonna tell them, the kind. And either they're gonna accept it or not. And then we'll see what happens. So I might get thrown out the whole I'm gonna come, I'm a, I'm a come fight. I'm gonna you know. have to show up fight ready. I, is, is it so bad for me to want Zombie or Volkanovski to get hurt and then Max show up? <laughs> Is it so wrong? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Okay. But at the same time, I mean, listen, that's your dream is to see Holloway in there. So if like Volk is not even that. If if Volk happens to wait, is is Max on? Is he making weight for this fight? Is he gonna be? He the backup. Is he for real? Yeah. 
So he'll probably be there. You might even be able to see him. That's, that's, what, that's what I was just going to say. I'm like, if he's making weight, man, I'm going to go to the Fan Expo on at least two of them. All I got to say is, what time are they? All I do you know what time they start? One time I, don't, I, I do not know. I just know I'm going. I'm showing up. I don't know yet. We'll find out Wednesdays soon. Wednesdays are on Friday. Yeah. Friday is like 6, 7 p.m. Something find like. out right now. I might, yep. I, might, I might roll out there with you, bro. Right. I mean, if we want to go after I get off work, I, I can roll out there. Friday? But... Yeah. Oh, actually. But, I mean, what? if I go to any of it, it has to be after 6 p.m. That's when you usually start. But uh, we could uh, cut this podcast and call it. And we can have a discussion exactly. offline. Facts. Zip it up. And I need another drink. Unzip it up. Unzip it up. Yes, sir. Zip it up and zip it up. Uh, yes, zip it up twice and zippity doo da. Bye bye.